And so we're like, okay, great. They're important to the environment. I was like, well, what's all the buzz about? I'm like, I'm trying to figure oh, out get to the bottom of this. I know I got some, some more. But I want to know, when I say bees, what do you guys think about? Like, what rolls through your head? Like, thoughts? Like, oh, no, Brian, what are you thinking? I'm worried about getting stung. You're worried about getting stung. That's a genuine concern, right? No one wants to get stung by a bee. Who here has been stung by a bee before? Sucks, right? I had the uh, honor and the privilege of working with uh, Mr. Nathan Chamberlain over at Westmont High School for over two years working regularly with bees. I was only stung twice by honeybees. You all know why? Because there's a common misconception between yellow jackets and honeybees. Yellow jackets are the bees that we get at, like, you know, your picnic and you're eating your lunch and he's like buzz, buzz, buzzing you up. They can sting multiple times before they die, whereas honeybees can only sting once and then they'll die. So you can have assurance of the fact that I've only been stung twice in over two years of working with bees. And so if you go in there just once to check it out, you'll probably be okay. So if anyone wants to come check out these, just let me know. We can figure that out. So we know who honeybees are, but now that we kind of have an understanding that we got to understand where do they live? Why would we keep bees? You know, so the reason we keep bees is to, number one, benefit the environment. Number two, honey tastes really, really good. We know that. So we know beekeeping is important to the environment, as Michaela outlined, but how we do it, where do they live? That brings me to this right here. Does anybody know the name of this? The beehive, woo uh, Beekeepers have like a uh, way of just naming things uh, super simply that I will go over as we go through the kind of some of the tools I have with us. This more specifically is called the Langstroth beehive. And for my visual learners, I kind of like to think of it as like a, a file cabinet of bees. You want to know why? Because what's inside these boxes are called frames. Now you can either have an eight frame or a 10 frame beehive. Now these are typically empty. What you see here is the wax that the bees built down to the little honeycomb shape pattern we have here. And so if you guys want to pass this around, take a look, be careful to the wax is a little soft. Uh, it's an older frame. So we have frames inside there that uh, bees hold together within these boxes. There's uh, different sizes for the box. If you notice the top box right there is a little bit shorter than the other boxes. Why is that? That's because that's called the super. That top box right there is not as big as the bottom two. These are called deeps. The super is where we harvest our honey from. In between the supers and the two deeps, we have what's called a queen excluder. And that is because the queen is so much bigger in size. See, there's three types of bees within the honey beehive. We have the queen bee, the worker, and the drone. Now, it's worth noting that the queen is literally the queen bee, kind of like a little Beyonce action, you know what I'm saying? The queen bee. Because it's because of the queen bee that all the other bees stay in high. You might think to yourself, well, why would all these bees want to stay in the same hive? What is the point of that? It's because of the scent of the queen that they stay in the hive. And we don't have time to go into it today, but during a, a beehive install, which I had the honor of being a part of my sophomore year, we literally dump bees into the hive. And I can't go over the details, but it's because of the scent of the queen that the bees stay within the hive. So now that we understand a little bit more about they live, we can understand a little bit about the role of the worker bee. The worker bee can have like a couple, several roles. So, like there's several jobs within the hive that they can do. Um, one of them being like wax building and egg, uh, well, not egg laying, but they build the wax out because that's where eggs get laid. Now you might be wondering, so this is the queen bee, and I didn't mention it yet, but worker bees are all entirely females. So like 99% of your thousands, like thousands upon thousands of bees are women. That's because the only male bees are drones, and their only job is to reproduce with the queen. Uh, that's the only job of the drone. As you see, they only live like 90 days. Their primary job is to eat, grow, reproduce, die. That is the job of the um, And so I think that's a really fun fact worth sharing. So a lot of people don't realize that, that all the bees, with most like the bees that you'll see like on the entrance of a hive, you can see um, down here at the entrance, there's typically guard bees. And uh, this is going to get into my next segment because we're going to talk about, so now we know where they live. We know who's inside. How do we go in there and work with them? Because like, right, these aren't bees. They're still bees that have stingers. They don't want to sting you because they'll die. They'll let you know they'll fly at you. But how do we enter it safely? So that brings me to my next tool. We need to have a hive tool and a bee brush. I kid you not, these are the names of them. Beekeepers name them really simply. A hive tool, literally all you do is you pull it in there to the hive, and bees create this thing called propellus. Can everyone say that would be propellus? It's a fun word. I like it. Propellus, yeah. And so propellus holds the hive together. What you have to do is take your hive tool and crack it open, like you might be like doing on a Saturday with the boys. And so when you crack it open the hive, <laughs> <laughs> so when you're cracking open the hive, you can pull out that top outer layer and an outer cover and uh, enter the hive. And so we always enter, can anybody guess which side of the hive we enter from? The top. The top? Well, yeah, you go in the top, but where do you stand? The back. And why is that? Because the guard bees in the front will bother you. And what you do is as you approach the back, you take your smoker. And I don't have a smoker with me here today because then I don't, you know, smoke alarms go off, we evacuate the building. Whole other process. But you smoke the hive 
Because that way the bees think, uh oh, our hive's on fire. <laughs> and so what they do is they, so where's that frame at? What they do is they poke their heads into these little holes where they hide their honey too, in the because it's either they use it for laying eggs or storing honey. They poke their heads in there, trying to grab as much honey as they can before ditching the hive. Now eventually they realize, oh, the hive's not on fire. But it's enough to distract the bees so that while you're entering. So if you see a frame that looks like this, see how all the bees are into the holes right there? The reason they're doing it is that probably because as he entered, he smoked it, and then they all put their heads in here. It's enough to distract them so you can go in there and work with them. So now we know we got into our hive, which brush away the bees with our bee brush, crack open the tool of this. Um, now we can go in there and work with the bees. So a little bit about the impact the bees can have on the area and why it's so beneficial at keeping them. Uh, here you'll see this is our environmental club founded in 2013 by Ms. Lisa Hooten, who I've pleasure of working with for a long time while I was at Westmont High School. And since the introduction of bees into our uh, to our school, which is only like, you know, we're talking maybe half a mile away, we have seen record years of pounds of produce from our garden. Bees can benefit the environment and they can also benefit the students in providing a unique educational opportunity. These are, I mean, beekeeping is really just opens the door to a lot of opportunities and it's definitely worth exploring if you haven't already. Thank you. And uh, if I have any, any questions, anybody, uh, I'm sure we got the ball rolling. That's that's all I got for you in terms of information. Oh, I'd like to eat my piece. You know, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, not as much, just because with you know school here and working, I I don't get over there as much. I don't live far from the school, but it's on school property. Uh, Westmont High School is currently one of two schools in the state of Illinois that actively maintain beehives on the school campus. So it is a pretty unique thing. Uh, I took AP Environmental Science and AP Biology while in high school, and both classes integrated the beehive as part of the curriculum. And it was really a cool thing to be a part of. So I ended up building the hive as part of my Eagle Scout project sophomore year. So yeah, it was it was a really cool opportunity. This guy right here is Mr. Chamberlain. He is I I, I got I would be remiss if I didn't brag about him a little bit because he's the one who hooked me up with the uh, visual aids. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. I got a lot now. Right, uh, I want the sneakers to stay back. And, uh, <laughs> I just want to That was good, John. That was awesome. <laughs> So we do it one uh, first of all, Deanne's recipe is just put on the spot, just stay outside and Deanne is not power. So yeah, we talk to all the students. Art survival. Awesome. Oh my and you gotta get on that art survival. <laughs>